Gentlemen, welcome to the Be The Man podcast. I'm your host, Greg Denning. And today, super excited to talk probably mostly about parenting. Uh, my guest, Sean Donahue, this is what he does. And he's done for like 25 years or more. Um, all about parenting, yeah. families. What's up, Greg? In. So glad to have you, How's brother. How's it going? Fantastic. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, Why don't you, um, it's good to be here. Kind of introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us about your family and what you do and and I would love to hear why you do it. What led you to to do it? Yeah, doing? yeah, sure, man. All right. So, um, I'm a 46 year old man, married for 20 years. I got three kids. Oldest is 19, youngest is eight. And in many ways, I'm just like a regular, regular show. You know, I love watching football on Sundays. I'm going camping in Santa Cruz, California, on the beach with some, you know, family friends camping trip this uh, this weekend. Um, I love working out. I, uh, I'm staring at the window right now, just looking at the hills. I love backpacking and, uh, that's love hot dogs from Costco. Fall salsa is my favorite food, but on the, on the other end of it is, uh, yeah, this, I, I had this idea, um, for a business about 11, 12 years ago. And so even, I know your your I asked you who your audience is. You have an entrepreneur, you know, men as an audience. And I don't normally talk about this. Because normally when I'm on podcasts, I don't like frame myself as an entrepreneur. I kind of brand myself in different ways. But yeah, I definitely had an idea for a business and and uh, rolled the dice, got it started. And uh, it was super scary. So much failure, so much pain. Just over the last 12 years, just constant, just failures, just one after another. And then just started having successes. And, and now here I am with you, man, with talking with you and just honored to be here. So I, I kind of even forgot the question. I got kind of excited talking that. about being an entrepreneur because I, yeah, I like never talk about it. Let's let's go a little bit more with that because that story is relevant. Um, because you got three kids and you start twelve yeah. years ago. So I mean, you're you're right in parenting. Yeah. I guess when you started, you had two kids at least, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. And how like, did you did you leave like traditional work? And I did. Yeah. So yeah, I, I had a. Uh, yeah, I was working with, I've just been working with children, teenagers and parents in like nonprofit sectors and in like Christian church environments for a long time. And it was great. I really enjoyed it. But I just had this like idea, this itch to start a business and to kind of branch off and to do my own thing and be creative and help people. And it was so scary. In fact, my father-in-law, he, uh, he's had a, con he's in construction and he had a white cargo van, like kind of like, you know, kidnapper van is what we, we call them in California. And so we had a, we had an idea. So we would go pick up used furniture off Craigslist uh -huh. or marketplace. And then we would flip it and we would just sell it out of our garage. And, um, that was the backup plan. Like That's if this awesome. business didn't work, I'm just gonna just keep flipping That's furniture. Awesome, and I was like, whatever it takes to put food on the, you know, on the on the dinner table because I really thought there's a strong chance this is gonna fail. No one's ever heard of this. I'm a woman. I'm a man in a woman's space. I'm I'm not really skilled in anything business. I don't know anything about business. Uh, and so this is probably not gonna. This may not work, but yeah, it's really fun to talk about because I don't really I just talk about it much earlier on. But yeah, talking about business is just exciting. It is. And what um, when do you feel like, yeah. when do you feel like it it changed? When did you feel the the tide change for you in the business journey? I think that um, you just have first client. Yeah. First, first time you, you sell something, yeah, you're like, I was like, I was sitting at a dinner. I was sitting down at a, you know, selling a, at that time, my business was called Sean Donahue family coaching. And now it's called parenting modern teens. And we help families from all around the country, all around the world. You know, I have a, over uh, 1.5 million followers on social media, a really popular podcast and it. Yeah. That's cool. Like, thanks for asking me this question. Just sitting down that first sale you make sitting down in the living room and I slid my rates over and they're very high. I was like, Oh my gosh, are they too high? What's going to happen? <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll do it. And then I started, you know, my first little contract working with this family and a really troubled teen boy. And, uh, he actually had run away from, he was a teenager, 16 year old dude named Mitchell. And he had run away and he was just like, from the house and they're like go out there and find our boy and bring him home 
And that's just another cool story. Yeah, what happened? That was the like nitty gritty of the hardcore work that I've done and still can kind of continue to do. But yeah, how about you? Let me ask you a question. You know, here you are, you've got an audience, you're living in Portugal. I just met you. Tell me what was like, uh, what was it like for you? Like, I'll ask you that first question, the first week or two of starting or like, how did you know, okay, this is going to work? Yeah, I, th I think I loved hearing your introduction because I think we have a lot of similar uh, aspects in our journey. I was just very driven to help families, um, especially in like the parenting okay. side of it, because, and I, I know okay. you know this and, and the guys listening know this, like there are a few things that are as important in life as is the work we do as parents, like oh my, what yeah. we do with our kids, loving our kids, serving oh. our kids, trying to get that right. It, it's everything. And it motivates it's everything. Me. So I was terrified like you, man, when, when we decided to go for it, I was, I was so scared that we were just going to be broke and, and same yeah. when, when the first guy's like, please help me. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then it just spreads. Um, It just spreads. Mm -hmm. So, do you predominantly work with teenagers now or parents with teenagers? So, yeah. So I've got a small team. So mostly what, mostly what I do is, um, parents, I work with, I work with the parents. I do parent coaching. Right. So if you think about it, kind of, it, it kind of makes sense that, you know, we, when we have issues with our teeth, we go to the dentist, we, we bring our, our cars to the mechanic and we all have these invisible parenting toolboxes. I can't yeah. see yours and you can't see mine. And in today's world, just, you know, so many issues can go wrong with our children and our teenagers. There's so much temptation. And we've got this generation of men now who are listening to this podcast. And these are really amazing men. These men are much different than their dads. Um, we are a generation of men who, who want to like, push ourselves in every area and we, including parenting, we want to be close. We want to be connected. We want to be mentors and we're willing to read a book, watch a video, watch different social media videos. We're like, we have a growth mindset towards parenting yep. and I can't speak for every man, you know, of any dad growing up in the eighties or whatever your, if your dad was in the seventies or eighties or nineties, whatever, I can't speak for them. But there were some great dads back then. But now where there is just this huge upswelling movement of men who are like, hey, I I want to be great in business. I wanna I wanna work out, but I really wanna, you know, I really wanna focus on my family and I wanna be the best husband I can be. And I'm open minded and I wanna I know I've got some luggage to work through, maybe some childhood issues. I got some temptations, I got some issues with this issue and this, and let's go. And I need help, I need support. And this is this is happening all over. It's really amazing. That's awesome. And and yeah, you're right. You're right. It's such a, it's a cool movement and such an important one. Let's, I, I love and, and really want to learn from your experience and your perspective with working with so many families. What are some of those, the biggest obstacles you're seeing um, that dads want or need to overcome? What are some of those? Well, things? I mean, so many obstacles. The first, I mean, the, the first two obstacles I think of is one is the screens. I mean, this is the, yeah. this is the parenting battle of our generation. Yeah. And, and we're, there's been a lot of good movement in the last 12 months towards screens, but I've been here, you know, doing this a long time. And I've just, I mean, I've just seen these screens just destroy kids, destroy parents, destroy families, you know, a bunch of just parents not knowing what to do, a bunch of scared parents. And now we're seeing a lot more educated parents, a lot more strong parents, a lot more mindful parents. We're seeing a lot more, okay, I'm feeling better about this. I feel like I've got a flow. But, you know, there's just, there's millions of kids out there struggling with screens. And that means there's millions and millions of parents who are like, what happened to my kid? Or what's happening? Or I wish screens were never invented. And so, yeah, man, I mean, this is a huge issue, right? I mean, isn't it, hasn't it been an issue in, in your home? Absolutely. I mean, if, if my... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and and everyone I work with as well. It's just across the board. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I just so finished got, a book. And called... we don't know what to do. Right, exactly. Yeah, we don't know what to do with it because the if it's really ridiculous. If you go to the, the government website here in the States, like the CDC websites, they have the most stupid, ridiculous web pages 
on screen development. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. It's like a sixth grader wrote it. It's like, well, talk to your kids about screens and monitor them. It doesn't have anything direct, no guidelines. And all the smartest guy, the smartest guys in the room, they're they're working at Snapchat, they're working at Google, they're working at Apple, they're working at PlayStation. And they they go on their websites, they got nothing either. Yep. So they know, they've known for years on what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And they're just silent because they're just collecting their dollars and they're leaving it up to us, regular old parents, to like figure this out. And it, it's just the information's getting out there more and more and more, which is good, but it's it pisses me off. It's yeah. really tough. It's, yeah. it's a huge problem and it's not being adequately addressed. Um, share share some a couple of your like the most effective strategies you've seen. Like what is what have you seen? Oh, here's some good news. Yeah, strategies. It? All right, man. Let's talk parenting strategies. Yeah. I got really good news for you. You guys, you guys are gonna dig. You're gonna dig it. You're gonna like what I have to say right here. It um right. Uh, the best thing you can do as a parent is just be close with your kids. Yeah. That's it. Now, it's not easy, especially when they become salty teenagers. But that's it. Like, that's what all the research points to. That's my 25 years of research, working in your with your sons and daughters, being close and connected with your kids. Now, so that is not easy. So we could talk about why it's so hard or how to be close because... A lot of us listening to this, we weren't close with our parents. So right. actually, you don't maybe even know how to be close with your children. Or you look at your wife, you're like, well, she's close, but they're not close with me. Or I'm close now, but how do I keep that closeness when they become 17? Or, okay, I feel like I need to discipline. I need to step in. But if I do that, it's going to hurt our closeness. Right. So it's like, it's like, yeah, we want to be the parent. But the, that old saying is, I'm your parent not your friend is kind of becoming more outdated because what is a friend? Like a friend is someone you like being with, like someone you laugh with, someone you have things in common with, you enjoy being around this person. So kind of being a great parent is kind of like being a good friend too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like if I'm your parent, I'm your friend. It's like, and, and, and then what you have here is that kind of like a mind game, Greg, for some people, because some people were like, well, my, my parent was super strict, really hard on me. Like was, we wasn't a friend at all, but I respect him. Right. Like I learned a lot, which is cool. That's great. So I don't need to be my kid's friend because my dad wasn't my friend. I was like, okay, that's fine. So see the people get threatened by that. Right. Cause they like, it's like, it's like, the, it's like an attack. Like, on them or their dad, if I say something like that, but then I would just say, Hey, I'm not trying to attack you. I'm not trying to attack your dad, but your dad probably could have been as he was, but he also could have been more friendly and kinder and more of a mentor. Cause who do you want to, who, who do you want your mentor to be? Do you want a, your mentor to be like some like douche that you don't like, or do you want your mentor to be someone you like and like speaks to you kindly and encourages you? Exactly. And that's the type of person you want to be close with. That's the person you want to learn from. Like I could just go on and on like on this. Like here's another great example. I hope I'm not talking too much. Like if someone knocks on your door right now and says, Hey, um, how's it going? I just met you. I'd like to uh I'd like for you to convert to my religion. And I would like to come in and tell you about my religion. Like ninety nine percent of us are like, no, man, like my way like you're not coming to my house like i'm good right but because they're just a stranger there's no connection there but if you're if your best friend in life your brother your cousin this guy you've just been through the trenches with for years he calls you up to say i got something um that's a big part of my life and it means a lot to me and i want to share it with you because i think you might be interested in it too and I, I think it'd be good for you. I'd love for you to check it out, whether whether it be religion or anything. Then most of us are going to respond with, oh, yeah, come on over. Like, let me throw steaks on right now. And I'd love to hear you out yeah, exactly. because there's that trust. There's that connection. So if you want to make a good impact on your kids, a huge impact on your kids, there's some really good news. Just nurture that closeness and that connection. And, and earn well, what you just articulated right there and described so well is just earning earning the the ability 
the earning the privilege to have that greater influence, which is so yeah. profound. I, so I, 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 in my mind, I can hear people saying, well, they feel like th they want the relationship, they want the closeness, but they're literally competing with a screen. Yeah. And right. And so in, unless they preemptively beat that and, and you know, that's yeah, tough to do, yeah. but if, if the yeah. kids are in the screens and, and they're constantly there, it's like, it feels like this competition. Yeah. What, what have you seen um, men do to, yeah, cool. To win, to win in that competition. Well, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. And if it's okay, I'd love to, you live like in a, you know, pretty cool place, Portugal. If I could, can I ask you a question? What are some things that you enjoy doing with your kids that kind of nurture closeness? Yeah. Like, you know, with your kids and I'll answer that question about screens right now. But, um, so I have, well, successfully helped countless parents around screens so you can have victory over the screens and so have hope for that yeah also realize that if your kid has an unhealthy relationship with screens or they're a screen addicted that's on you you can't have an addiction without an enabler like you did that like you screwed up yes. you're you've made some bad bad choices you're your your kid your kid needs you and you got to step in to change that because Screens are like the most powerful device in the history of mankind. They're more powerful than any bomb, any gun, any tank, because they have the ability to change our minds yep. and change a child's mind. And so, like, if you have a grandpa and he, he takes a kid out to the woods and says, okay, sonny, I'm going to teach you how to use this rifle. First of all, that's the cool grandpa right there then the grandpa is going to teach the kid how to use this dangerous device. And if the kid or the teenager starts acting out, acting stupid with this thing, then grandpa Joe's going to be like, okay, we're done. We're done. Give me that thing. Nope. You're not ready. You're not ready because you have to be able to trust the child with this extremely powerful device called yep. a rifle or gun. So screens on the surface are about screens. On the surface, they're about Fortnite, which I was playing last night with my 15-year-old daughter and her 15-year-old boyfriend and his 11-year-old sister. We were doing a squads <laughs> last night, Fortnite. And um, so on the surface, they're about Snapchat. It's about all these things, but really they're not. Just train your brain to see that screens are about trust. You either have it or you don't. And it's your job to teach it. It's your job to teach trust to your children because they're never going to take class in the psychology of trust and how powerful these screens are and how they must, we must keep a trusting relationship with these devices if we're going to bring them into the house. Yep. Oh, so good. So, so good. <clears throat> um, Thanks. Uh, I want to answer the question you asked me because I, I think it just got me running. It's relevant to okay. well, one building the trust, building the relationship. And I guess my, my approach has been like yeah. for, for us, I don't, I don't know if every family can do this, but for us, I want to make our life more exciting, more engaging, more appealing mm -hmm. than yeah. some screen. Right. Yeah. Instead of yeah. watching it vicariously, like we're going to live it. And so, so with our family, we travel, we do, just bucket list stuff all the time. We travel all over the world. We just wow adventures. Like we just got yeah. I saw a really cool picture. It looks like maybe your kids on in your Instagram. We're in these like, is that you? I don't know if it was. Do you have, yeah. yeah, I mean, you probably have a few of those, right? Yeah. A bunch. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah. We but, stack those up. We're just stacking memories and adventures. But we just got back wow. from Kazakhstan and Mongolia and China and Qatar, and wow, you know, we just go out and do these do these just life changing stuff. But and that's kind of the macro level, right? Where I'm like, we're gonna go okay. do big adventures together. But on a micro level, like mm -hmm. we exercise every day together. Oh wow, you do. Yeah, every day we work out together. That's, so I'm so I'm with you. Like I love exercising, but I I, I wanted that family culture, and that's been yeah. one of one of our unique and super powerful family bonds is mm -hmm. exercising together. And then mm -hmm. I read to my kids. Um, so we read read great books together, which. That's, that's another thing. Those are just two two simple examples where I think oh, wonderful. that's built the bond um, and and maintained the bond so that we have the closeness of the relationship. So when, do you read to them or do you read the same book at the same time and then chat about it? So when they're little, I read to them. 
Um, and I, so I've, our, our oldest is 20, like 22. So I've been reading mm-hmm. for 22 years. So I read the little ones at night. And then now with the older ones, we read the same books or listen to the same books and then talk about them. Can you give me an example of one or two books that maybe you read recently with some of your older kids um, or younger? Right, man, right now we're going through Love Does by Bob Goff. Oh, I've read the children's version of Bob Goff to my eight-year-old. Yeah. Incredible book. So good, You're, man. Oh my gosh, Bob Goff is a genius. Yeah, he's awesome. He's super so you're reading the big version. I, don't, yeah. I think I have that too. No, I think I have everybody, everybody does or everybody I loves, everybody wins. Yeah. The children's version of Love Does, it's like a children's book with like these little like three page stories. I think that's the name of it. It's so good. That's it's awesome. so good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just those little things like that. You you know, man, it just makes it, it makes a, it makes a huge difference to engage mm-hmm. with the kids and be involved in fun ways that are, that are meaningful to them. It's like making deposits in the, in the relationship account. Yeah. That's really nice. Really nice. Really. Thanks for showing these stories. It's inspirational to hear you, hear you say that stuff. What are, what are some of those? I got another, I got lots of questions, but let me shift to another question. What are some of the, um, maybe the most common is it mistakes or misunderstandings uh, mm. with for for dads and their kids? And, and maybe even oh yeah, teens. this is, I think that's an important question, especially like I'm just trying to guess your audience and type of man that's listening to this. You know, I'm guessing your audience and some of your clients are a lot like mine. Some of them are really high achievers, type A entrepreneurs, executives you know, very like, I want to push myself yep. to the max high achievers. Does it sound like that yep. menu are listening to this right now? Yep. So yeah, I think then I'm going to laser focus my response to them. Perfect. What are some of the mistakes that these type of men make? All right. Here's a few things that come to my mind. First thing is, uh, I have this teaching that I think is really really important. It's very, very good. It's very true. I hope you do it, but it's really hard. It goes like this. You got to parent the child you have, not the child you want. That's tough. That can be tough, especially if you like, like yourself and you think you're a good person and you're really successful and you have a lot of good things going on in your life, that could be especially hard for you. Cause then you're like, I'm cool. I'm great. I figured life out. I'm successful. So now I want my kids to be like me and to do what I did and and to do what I do. And so in rare circumstances, you'll have a dad that says, I like to work out and my kids work out with me. (laughs) I like to read and my kids read with me. Like, that's a wonderful story you shared there, Greg. I mean, it's incredible story. Like, I've been working with parents for a very long time. And that little story you shared, I mean, I don't know if you realize that. It's just incredible. Your kids work out with you and they read with you. That's hard to, that's hard to, um, that's hard to establish. Like having your kids follow in your footsteps and do what you want to do. In most of the situations, you have to pivot and parent the child you have, not the child you want. What do you think about that saying, man? No, it's it's, it's profound. Give us give me give me some more examples, and I can think of in my own experience and others. But I'd love to hear some of your examples and thoughts, and 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 maybe some specific application. So, I'm guessing one of the things you're saying is if if the child has interests over here, you go with the child into those interests instead of trying to pull the child into your that would be one way of looking at it yeah so like let's you know yeah that would be one way interest hobbies um yeah give us some more one way of looking yeah one one way would be looking at it would be like you know i remember a really sad conversation i had with a friend like 12 years ago we were we were on a jog together and he's a successful banker and he was just talking about his like 13 year old son in a negative light about just how he doesn't have anything in common with him. And he, uh, the, you know, the son doesn't want to go on runs with him and he just, 
you know, wants to talk about baseball and play video games. And I'm not really into that. And like, I, I really want him to do this one course on financial, you know, maturity. He won't do that. He just wants to screw around all the time. And, and he was just like venting to me. Yep. But for me, it was like, like, what the hell, man? What the hell? I know this boy is amazing. 13 year old boy. You have a son. I have three daughters. I never can have a son. I want your son to be my son. Your son likes baseball. Shut the hell up and go play baseball with your son. Enjoy. Go to the baseball games. You have an amazing son. Yeah, your son wants to screw around. Well, screw around with your son. He's 13. He's 13-year-old. Screw up. Screwing around. That's what 13-year-olds do. They play. They're kids. Go play and have, you know, mess around with your son. It's not about you. Like, your son's not going to be 13 for like a day. And so enjoy your son while he's 13 and then what happens is that if you if you spend time with your your kid doing things that you know you may not enjoy doing when they get older they're going to start doing things that you enjoy doing because they get it like here just to build on that example like ask me right now some trivia on my little pony go for it dude greg test me on my little pony yeah. do you think i like my little pony no but i know a lot about apple jack uh, Rainbow Dash, Twilight Sparkle, Princess Alexia. You think I? You think I like playing with dolls, man? I've been playing with dolls for 19 years. I'm still playing with dolls because I've got three daughters that the good Lord gave me. So, man, I've been raising and playing with dolls and for 19 years, man. Because, right? You think I enjoy doing this? Like, not really, but I do it because this is what it means to enter their world and parent the kid you have. Yeah. I love sports, man. I played year-round basketball. I played pickup basketball two, three times a week. And I got only one daughter that tried to play basketball. So far, maybe the youngest is going to go for it. And it was awesome. She scored zero points in two years of playing basketball. She didn't make one basket, man. She didn't make one basket. She's so amazing. And she was a great rebounder. She passed. And she wasn't her favorite thing, but she did it. I think she might have did it a little bit for me, maybe for herself. But that's the thing. Like, just you got to adapt and just you know, go with the flow with your kids and just accept them and know them for where they are. And that is a big mistake that many, many, um, yeah, many high achiever type dads make. I mean, that's just one big mistake, but I go on and on that mistake because it is a popular one. And that one, yeah, you're right. That one's very prevalent. If if we're out chasing dreams and goals and and high achieving, very driven, very ambitious, it, we want to yeah. get that target and yeah. Pull. Pull them all up to that. Do you want to, here's a second mistake. This one's kind of controversial. You might even disagree with this one. Okay. Send it. Here's, Let's see. here's something I've been thinking a lot about. So we have these sayings in sports, right? And like, imagine like you're a dad or you're a coach and you're coaching your kids in sports. And here's what most dads say, especially high achievers. So here's what I want you to do. All you got to do is go out there and have fun and do your best. You got to work hard and give it your all. That's all I expect. That sounds like a pretty basic speech, right? No. Right? Yeah, a very common one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, very common. Yeah. Is there do you see anything wrong with that speech? No. Right, because most people don't. Right. But <laughs> but I do. I do. And I'm just being a little picky because, you know, this is my space, this is my Perfect. world, so I think about stuff. Yeah. In ways that other people don't think. But um play pickup ball two three times a week i'm like six two i'm like a shooting card i could play i could play point guard I, I could play center and i um i i'm i'm an okay player i'm pretty good but there's some people better than me but sometimes when i play basketball at 5 45 in the morning i don't give it my all greg i don't give it my all because it's pickup basketball in the morning i'll go at 50 percent Sometimes I've got, I'm nursing, I'm 46 and my body is breaking down. I got a little broken thumb, never been to the doctor, but I think I broke it. I got a little sliver break. I've got freaking like tennis elbow in my right, in my right. So it won't go away. And my toe is numb from an injury from like two years ago. And I wake up, man. I'm just like, I'm just trying to go half speed, dog. I'm not trying to just work it. To show up. I'm just trying to have <laughs> fun and freaking toe. exercise. I'm just trying not to get injured. Yep. You know? I love it. Yeah. And so if if you were to show up, be like, all right, Sean, be the man. Go. I want you to work in. hard. I'll be like, shut the hell up, Greg. I'm just trying to have fun, man. <laughs> so the it. problem with that speech is that 
you, you have to decide what is sports. Yeah. Like is sports really, can your, can your 12 year old just have fun? Yeah. And do they have to work it as hard as you want them to work it? Or they just work it at their own pace. Yeah. And so instead of saying, Hey, I expect you to go and you got to push yourself. If you're going to play, you have to go, you have to be, you have to, you have to instead say, look, man, it's a game. So, yeah. and I think what you'll find is that if your kid is really, really into that sport, they're going to push themselves. Oh, yep. Right. And they'll find it, whatever find the thing themselves. that they're willing to really push into. It'll come. Mm-hmm. At least that's that's been my experience where when they find it's either an age or maturity thing or a, by choice, they're like, oh, this thing. And they're really willing to yeah. work. But I think as parents, sometimes we're It'll afraid come. my kid will never learn how to work if I don't. They're very afraid of that. Give them the speech on everything they participate in. I also share a little controversial well thing where I say, yeah. I'll say, Hey, it, it's okay. It's okay to quit some things. Uh, so many yeah. parents are like, well, no, I don't want my kid to be a quitter. If they start something, they finish right. it. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. not everything's yeah. worth finishing. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Right. Right. We don't be lying. You quit stuff, you know, yeah, sometimes exactly. all the time. You just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of fear in parenting like that if you want to be a really great parent you've got to do the inner work in on your own fears what are you afraid of because right there you brought up a great example Ooh. i'm afraid that if i let my quit kid quit lacrosse then he's going to be a quitter forever yep. i'm afraid that if my kid's not pushing themselves very hard on the soccer field at age eight then i'm raising a lazy bones that yep. just wants to play video games all day Exactly. I'm afraid that if I let my son, you know, have attitude around me, that I'm a bad dad and he's going to become so disrespectful. He's going to be disrespectful to cops. He's going to end up in jail by the time he's 18. Like, see, there's just a, I'm a, so many things we're afraid of yep. so many. And, and if you're not afraid of things in parenting, it means you're, you, you're maybe not in, as in tune with yourself or your emotions as you should be because that's a normal, healthy part of being a leader, being a lion, being a, a, a strong man is looking and seeing all the scary stuff around you being like, okay, I see it. I'm not going to parent in fear. I'm not going to parent in fear, but I'm going to be aware. I'm going to be parent in wisdom yep. because parenting and, you know, if you're parenting in fear, then you're not parenting in wisdom. And that's how that's a talk about mistakes. That's a, a huge mistake that many parents in 2024 are making. They're parenting in fear. They're afraid of having their kid ride their bike down to the park to play with their friends because they're afraid of getting kidnapped. Yep. They're afraid of all these things happening. I'm afraid if my kid doesn't get 3.8, then he's not going to go to a good college and he's going to become a loser. It's like, what is going on? Yeah, man have you have you read have you read the it's called the Anxious Generation? You read that book yet? I have. I just bought it. Okay. it's on my shelf by like a month ago. That tell me your thoughts. Have you read it yet? Yeah, man. And you're you're like you're speaking from it already. Like there are two or three things you already said. I'm like, oh, yeah. you're gonna love that book, where he talks about that. We're eliminating that fear and letting our kids move away from a screen based childhood to a play based childhood. And really, it's it's fundamentally from the fear we have as parents and teachers and community leaders. I'd like to think that Jonathan Haidt is the leader we've been waiting for in a sense with his, he's got this teaching, it's called the four norms, and I can tell you what they are, but it's like, we've been waiting for a strong, rational voice to speak up and just tell us what to do. Yeah. And that's what his four norms are. Do, can, can I, you want, you want me to share the norms? Yeah, please yeah. share them. Well, you, yeah, do you... Um, so the norms would be um, no cell phone until 14, yep. no social media. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't read the book. You've read the book. I've just been watching him on a lot of social media podcasts. So no social, no phone, no smartphone until 14, so high school. Yep. Two, no social media on that phone yep. until 16. Yep. It's so well, good. And, and solid, hard line, especially for <laughs> our daughters. Hard lines. Yeah, for daughters, yep. it's, it is just a wrecking ball to their psyche. A wrecking ball. Can't handle it. Yep. Wish we did that with my oldest because now she's 19. And she's saying, I wish that you guys were stronger. And I said, no, but we were very strong and very, um, we w- waylated than all of her friends. But yep. it's still like, we wish we had done it more. We just, 
Um, and that's cool of her to acknowledge that. That's awesome. It is. Yeah, it is cool. And, um, you know, we had a, we thought we, she made good choices on the phone, you know, she wasn't obsessed or addicted to it, but she was just a, you know, she's 19 now and she was right. A 16 year old young woman just trying to figure it out. And even then 16 is, oh. it's just, I mean, they're just 16, right? Can you remember what you were doing when you were 16? And then the, the next norm is phone free schools. Yep. I love that one. And I don't have this data memorized yet, but I do believe or it's a fact that the two largest school districts in the United States, New York and LA have passed legislation to move to phone free schools soon. And that is going to be a game changer. Yeah. And God, I think it's going to correct the, yeah. Yeah. Important distinction there that, that I heard from him in in the book specifically he says it can't be that they have the phone with them just turned off or in their bag. Yes. He says yeah. it, it like it has it cannot come in the school. It's too tempting. It's, not yeah. coming in the school. It's too tempting. Yeah. Right. And you have a generation of scared parents, that's us, yeah. who have been on Facebook and we heard about a kid getting kidnapped like 2,000 miles away. So we're so afraid. So here we give this kid this device because we feel like we need to track them. Well, we weren't being tracked at all. Like, think right. about this. This is the first human generation of human beings to grow up with these screens in their pockets in their bedroom who are being tracked. And they're just all around. That would be his fourth no, his fourth uh, norm. It says something like, like more unsupervised free outdoor play, something like that. I should probably, you know, memorize that too. Does that sound familiar, yep. Greg? Yeah, you nailed it. Where he's just and and, and more adventurous. He he, he mm -hmm. I love the way he says it. He says, We we don't want scars, but we definitely want more bumps and bruises. He's like, Oh wow, kid, I love that. Get out and, yeah. and experience that. Yeah. Like as much as I love organized sports, love organized sports. They're you know, uh, our kids need more than organized sports. There's, there's, if you just put your faith in organized sports or travel sports, like there, you, you gotta be aware there's dangers of that. Like some of the best things that our kids need are just, you know, getting in the back of a boat in a tube or jumping off a cliff into a lake or just going to the beach, going to the lakes, just going there with their friends, going to the parks, you know, being together, swimming pools, trampolines, just living life like that, travel, adventure, you know, going on service trips. Oh, yes. All that good stuff. Exactly. And letting them go. Yeah. I think, man, I think. Hey, what's, what's the tip? Let me, let me ask you. You're a very uh, special person. You've been, I just met you, but clearly you've got some skills and you've got some amazing parenting skills and unique things that you're doing, raising your kids. If I were to ask you, give, 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 give us one or two parenting tips from your oh. years of raising your kids. What is one or two things that you would be like your, you know, foundational tips that you believe in? Yeah. I, I related to one, what you were just saying. And I was, I was thinking, as you said it to, you know, let them go jump off the cliffs and go try all the things and, and do the dangerous stuff. Um, I, I just decided early on, well, okay. Maybe I'll back up because I loved I loved doing the adventurous stuff. And I grew up in a mm -hmm. broken family. And so I actually left home at 16. So I was out on mm -hmm. my own. Like I could do whatever I wanted. Like I had no parental supervision. And and I just loved adventure. I was just trying adventurous stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. So as my kids wanted to try stuff, I thought, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna go all in. Like if they want to jump, we're jumping. If they want to yeah. try something, we're gonna try it. And I'm gonna teach them how to be safe. And then Full send. Um, Full send, yeah. We even found a place uh, in Mexico. They let you go skydiving as long as you're over eight years old. So we took our entire family and went skydiving, right? It was, it was, it was eight years old in Mexico. It was, yeah, it was awesome. We get in this little, Dude, plane, that's the whole family your jumped. wife is, uh, your wife right. is very uh, brave and yep. she's very trusting of you yep. and Mexican skydivers. Yep, yeah, that's exactly. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she was there she, and she did it with us. It was like, yeah, it's scary, but it was, it was an awesome experience. So, oh my being, gosh, an eight-year-old skydiving. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm just hung up on that image right now. I have an eight-year-old. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Please continue. Please yeah, continue. it was awesome. So, so pursuing the adventures, allowing, allowing our kids, and this this one is also scary mm -hmm. and also difficult, like you were talking about, but allowing our kids to dream and chase yeah. 
their dreams. Yeah. And I think a, another yeah. thing I see is that parents get afraid. Like if the kids come back and like, I want to go scuba diving off the great barrier reef. Okay. His parents were like, Oh, that's so far away or it's so expensive mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you're not even scuba certified or I hear they have sharks there. Like, and so we mm -hmm. pull back and pull back, pull back. And I think sometimes we inadvertently hold our kids back where, you know, as a parent, I, I want to be, I'm aspiring to be the guy that is the yes dad, like encouraging the yes dad. kids to, yeah. to chase, chase their yeah. dreams. Yes. Chase their dreams, not your dreams. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And it sounds like you've kind of set the example for that, which is, which is, you know, talk about a mistake and uh, another really wonderful thing to think about. Um, I think, Here's let me just kind of say the same thing you said in a different way. Yep. Um, something that's really helped me as a dad get through the hard times that I've had with my kids and help other parents through their hard times is a little saying that I have is, um, you know, parents are teachers and every home's a school. And that's the name that's actually similar to the book that I've been writing for four years. It's hopefully going to be coming out soon. It's called Schools Won't Teach This. A parent's how-to guide to raise wise, emotionally intelligent adults. Love it. Very deep book. Can't wait for people to read it. Hope it hits bookshelves everywhere. But on one hand, when you break that down, parents or teachers, you should hopefully feel some weight to that. Yep. Like, oh my gosh, you're right. Your, my kid is never going to take class on the psychology of trust, how to manage the screen, how to have self-control, how to have self-esteem, how to build self-esteem from within, how to not be in a codependent relationship, how to stand up for yourself in a healthy way, how to have a healthy relationship with food. Your kid is not going to ever take a class in the world's most important topics. So they need a teacher and these idiots behind these screens are like vying for your kid's attention to be their mentors, to be their teachers. But good news, parents are the most powerful people in a child's life. So the weight should be really, well, you've got to step up and parent and teach and guide and mold and love and be present so you can earn the right to be heard to do this. So that is weighty. And that really makes sense. It's like, if you're not ready to do that, then they shouldn't have kids in the first place. Long gone are those days of a dad being like, yeah, I just went to work. I pay the bills. What else do you want me to do, honey? I'm paying the bills a, a lot more yep. than just paying the free and the electricity bill, man. And then you go and drink, you know, Coors Light while you watch a game. So much more than a father than that. But here's, here's the stuff where you take a breath and relax. Is that I'm just a teacher, so I cannot control the learner. And my kids are their own, like, wildflowers. They're not bonsai trees. They're going to grow at their own pace. And if I have a child who doesn't want to listen to my teaching, that doesn't make me a bad teacher. It doesn't make that kid bad. Right. It just means like, hey, that kid's on their own journey and they're maybe a slow learner and they're not ready to receive these lessons. Like if you go to church or a synagogue, you know, and you, you don't listen to the pastor or the rabbi, does that mean that they're a bad preacher? No, it just means you aren't ready to listen to that lesson and that's okay. And so part of being feeling free as a parent and being successful is just kind of this letting go and being like, I really feel like in my heart, I'm doing the best I can. Not perfect, could do better, but that's okay because I'm imperfect and I'm just, my job is just to teach by example and with my words and some lessons are going to stick and some aren't and, and how I handle that really matters. Yeah. And so I think that's freed me up that type of mentality, that mindset, just be the best, you know, dad I can be. And then to help me through the hard times. Yeah. Love it. How have you seen, cause there's a, I love what you said, and but there's a little side that, there's a temptation to be more passive and kind of wash your hands of it. Maybe throw in the towel and be like, well, I did the best I could, you know? Yeah. They weren't ready for yeah. it. I, I tried. Right. Which I, I, and I guess only, only each person will r really know is like, did you really try? Did you really do your best? Were you, Just were you trying temptation. to pivot? Yeah. Right? Or, or were you, are you just using that as a cop out? Like, oh, I tried. You, you sound like a wise man who's parented a teenager before. Yeah. <laughs> because that is such a legit thing. 
we we get frustrated for our lack of impact and we get tempted to just wash our hands being like yeah kids will be kids yep i'm done so one of the big responses that i have to that to be helpful if, if you were feeling that way is to is to realize that parenting like a teenager and even someone in their 20s um is like shifting yourself into this role of a mentor yep like a coach like especially when that child hits like 12th grade senior year like you're not a controller you're not the protector anymore you're their coach and you will feel rejected at times yep and powerless and disrespected and unheard and that is normal and that's okay yep <laughs> because you are this child's not you know controlled by a joystick and you are not god and these are normal feelings but it's how you manage those emotions really matter because if you just give up and you wash your hands what that means is you're you're not coping with the emotions of parenting well fight flight or freeze and you're you're flighting even though your child still might be in the house and this is i hope you see i, I think it sounds like you agree this is like a pretty big yeah. temptation for huge. many many parents yep. huge problem huge problem they just give up yeah I, man i gosh i had i had never thought of it about um the flight aspect you're right it's a, it's like hey this isn't working I, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm frustrated. I'm scared. And so the washing hands of it is, is a flight. It's a flight response. And so it's like this fearful, the brain shuts down and, and you, you flee. Uh, yeah. But to articulate it, it's so profound and we have to stay in it. And yeah. my, my perspective is, is like, if it's not working, try different aspects, yeah. try a different, exactly. Example, like adjust. Yeah. Yes. And see what lands. And, yeah. and you're right. Like you, we want our kids to become independent. Like I want yeah. my kids to like move out and be adults. Well, that yeah. means they have to start being independent from me and say, yeah. Hey, I'm going to do my thing. And this is the choice I'm going to make. And, and, and now I'm, I'm trying to be independent. We want that. Yeah. We have to move through that phase of them desiring independence yeah. tactfully and becoming the mentor. I, I love, I love the way you're articulating and, that. And here's a here's a great word so in, that I love. Instead of choosing fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, which is like people pleasing, because yelling and yelling at our kids is a form of fight, right? Um, if you're in that space and you have a challenging kid or a challenging teenager or challenging twenties, instead of doing those things, uh, a great alternative is to choose patience. Yeah. Patience does not mean avoidance. Yes. Patience means you're here. You're being patient. You're not giving up. You're not acting out. You're not sabotaging yourself by saying something stupid, right? You're patient. You're a patient mentor. Patient with your mentee. And that is um that's the key. That is so key to good parenting is patience with your kids. And that again goes back to parent and child you have. Not child you want. Just realize, hey, be patient with this kid right now. Maybe in a year or two, they're not ready for this. Maybe they'll never be, but I just want to be patient. And and stay in it. Stay engaged. Stay, stay present and be patient in it. I love that. Instead of I'm yeah. going to step out and be patient over here, disengaged. Disengaged. Avoid, avoid it all and, try, and saying I'm being patient. You're right. Just staying right in it. It's less, it's more, yes. We step out because it's, it's pain. It's less painful. Yeah. And being patient and being connected with your kids is painful. It's That's tough. why like, if you're a good parent and parenting is not easy, like it's just, if parenting is hard for you, it means you're good. You're probably a good parent because right? <laughs> you're, exactly. you're trying. Because you're trying. Yeah. Okay. Trying. Let's, I want to, I want to shift gears a couple and, and see, I'm curious here. If you know, people, the guys are listening to this, and and we've talked about powerful principles, importance of parenting, and, and strategies here. Are there if if there's a there's a guy he's like got a few kids, wants to be a great dad. You say what are what are some specific 
actionable things I can start doing on a daily or weekly basis? And, and is this something you even get into? I mean, maybe it's not, but I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Are there like, okay, what, what do I do this week, Sean? How do I start mm -hmm. to, to make adjustments and improvements to being a better dad? Yeah. Like, what does, what does tomorrow look like? What does this week look like? Um, I don't, there's a lot of things running through my mind right now, but there's one parenting tool that I nerd out on. It's the, it's the number one tool that I teach all of my clients, whether they're in my one-on-one -on -one sessions or in my, you know, inside my membership, it's a, um, I call it the heart talk, heart talk. Um, before I tell you about it, I think you probably already know what it is. Um, if I were to ask you, like when you're having a heart talk with, with your kid, Greg, what do you, what, what's it about? I'm just kind of curious. Can you entertain me for a second and answer my question? Like, what do you think a heart talk is? Or when you're having a heart talk with your kids? Yeah. Yeah. Like a heart, like um, my heart in my chest, the heart to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, I'm going to be, we're going to talk about the things that are most important to me. Um, my greatest desires for them. It's going to be around my love for them. It's going to be, it's going to be emotional and 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 close uh, things that are important to me. I think, and how much? Yeah, I yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So in any type of communication, there's uh, speaking and listening. In any type of bad conversation, it means there's bad speaking and there's bad listening. In any type of really good conversation, like the one we're having, you know, you kind of take turns with the person where you listen and you speak. Active listening, empathy validation and you could use good listening skills yep. and then when you speak you use good speaking skills yep. right you don't label them you don't you have an agreeable tone you have positive words you have a positive ending and you speak from your heart so one thing i've learned is that when it comes to parenting so much of parenting is is about really connecting your heart to your kid's heart and many men really struggle with this because they were never modeled this by the men yep. in their lives. So they speak from their head or from their butts, oh. right? Speaking out of your butt, they give these lectures, these pep talks, scoldings, these threats. When in, in, in reality, what's happening here is that like your kid doesn't want to eat their vegetables. And that, that is a, uh, a, that's a, that's a heart issue. Your kid being late, to get ready for school on time and affecting all the other siblings, you want to address that with the heart. Your kid, like having a bad attitude, um, getting off a screen or not wanting to, your teenager, not wanting to spend time with grandma and grandpa or be respectful or speak to you in a disrespectful way. These are all issues of the heart. These cannot, these will not be successfully solved through a lecture, a pep talk or a punishment. Please. Because if you punish a child, you might get them to show that outward respect or that outward obedience, but that's pretty cheap. Yep. And what you really want is deep inner, inner obedience, inner respect, inner care. And that if we're problem solving, so we're teachers and we're mentors, we've got to train our minds to speak to their heart. And many, many men really struggle with that. And I don't blame them because we were not, we were not raised like that to talk like that. And then we look at our wives, we're like, you're being so soft on them. And they look at us, we're like, you're being too hard. And so, yeah, you can, the, but the, the true masculinity means, yeah, being, yeah, you can, you can be, be harsh, you can be strong, um, but you can also be gentle and sweet. And we've all been there. We've all, it's just, we all had these talks before with our kids, but that is like, you want to create that hard talk, a part of your home culture. Yes, I love that because that's like you were saying. That's where the transformation actually happens. Mm -hmm. Where that's where the actually that's the genuine. Dad, when has a dad lecture ever worked? Like when, it when has man. it ever it landed in the like never again? <laughs> does it? I gave the best dad lecture. <laughs> I've changed. Exactly. I've changed, Dad. You're you're so good, right? You're, <laughs> Your lecture was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're spot on, Sean. That was awesome, and. And the heart talk, even with the little daily misbehaviors, mm -hmm. when they're addressed the right way, yeah. the behavior changes. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Because they, the child then starts really processing, emotionally processing, connecting, understanding what's going on. You know, no, most children don't change when they get yelled at. Yeah. 
even most punishments, believe it or not, are are pretty wildly unsuccessful. Ooh, uh, like I've personally oh. never met a teenager in my life who said to me, "Yeah, my I got grounded for it," and uh, it really hurt, man. It really I'm not gonna do that anymore because I hate being grounded. It's right. the worst. I've learned my lesson. Yeah. Like it just doesn't. It's just it's it's just normally not very effective for kids grounding them. Even like yeah take my screen away for a day it just doesn't there's it's like it doesn't reach the heart if you're going to do discipline which is really rooted in the verb training you've got to really you, you got to take the time you got to really train them to yep. understand all, all the socio-emotional aspects of what's going on why you're doing this what's the purpose and help them see that yes even because fundamentally we inadvertently teach the wrong lesson. Like, Hey, don't do this because you can get caught. And if you get caught, you'll get punished versus, yeah. Hey, let's do the right thing for the right reason, whether anyone's watching or not. Yeah. Like I yeah, want well said. to make good decisions on their own, not just because somebody might catch them and they would get in trouble. Right? Gosh, that's so great. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. We want them to do all these things, not because we, told them to do them right. because but because we're helping them understand this is what we do in this family this is part of our family culture we love your siblings we we put the family over sports exactly we put our family and our mental health over our academics even though that's very important too yep. we slow down and we care for each other we have these hard talks we don't just rush through life you know just going from one thing to another this family and our being close and being connected is more important than these things. I love that. Yeah. So, so good. So good. All right. Um, well, we, we can wrap right there. That's fantastic. Let people know uh, where they can reach out to you, where they can learn more from you. I know you have the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you have group coaching, you, you got tons of stuff on, on. Yeah. Thanks online. man. Thank you. Yeah. You can find me online as, uh, as the family coach, uh, or my podcast, which is, uh, called the sean donahue show we produce two to three podcasts per week Ooh. or you can visit me on my website which is parenting modern teens i work with men through private sessions or through this really powerful really affordable uh, membership that i provide i do a lot of role playing with clients so that's how i help solve problems I'm like what do i say when my kid says this to me and then i'll like act it out it's very very effective coaching and so um yeah that's a little bit about me i'm based out of uh sacramento california area so greg man you're really a i can just tell you're a really great leader and um a great dad and, and so thanks for letting me get to know you and hear about your family your amazing family and what you're doing for for your men everywhere yeah thanks for having love me. it oh, and thank you for what you're doing like like i like i said early on well i think i think particularly because my dad split out when i was really young stepdads came and went Mm -hmm. So when I started a family, I was mm -hmm. like, this, this is going to be one of the most important things I ever do in life. Yeah, man. And, and I think yeah. if, if all of us as men will move fatherhood up the, the priority list yeah. a little yep. bit and, and make it more important, even, even perhaps just that one mental, emotional movement will make us more effective because yes. it's more important to us. Yeah. And love I it. think one of the most important things we do. So you're, you're, well you're said. involved in a great work, brother. So appreciate what you, you are doing. too. Thanks Thank for, you. Thanks for being on here, man. Thanks for having me. Okay.